Today is February 13, 2015, and we have an article from the Free Thought Project. It is titled, Amid the NYPD's Work Stoppage, New York City Sets Record 11 Days in a Row with No Murders. And this proves everything. Our society does not need police driving around, enforcing laws, proactively hunting us, harassing everyone, scaring the crap out of the everyday citizen. And what we have here is we have many parts of America that feel like a non-free, occupied territory because the police in this country have become a standing army. And when people feel like they're being occupied by an invasion, this escalates tensions, this escalates situations, and that's exactly what we see out of the police in this country. Police are trained to escalate situations. They are not trained to de-escalate. That's why if you touch a police officer on the shoulder while he's talking to you, he will literally take you down and probably kill you. And I've seen it happen many times online. All you got to do is watch it. There are numerous videos online of people who are doing nothing. The cops sh probably shouldn't have even been called, but they show up and people get arrested. They get beat. They get killed. They get tased all because the cops showed up and they are trained to freak out over any little thing that they think endangers their safety. The NYPD hasn't had to call on its homicide team in 11 days. This is the longest stretch ever in the history of the department. The irony here is that the NYPD has been involved in a work stoppage since the end of December. So what this really means is we don't need our daddy patrolling the street, making sure we're safe, telling us what to do. People can go about their lives just fine without the cops going around, hunting us, and making sure we're abiding by the law. Early numbers obtained by the New York Post showed certain arrest levels to be staggeringly low. Citations for traffic violations fell by 94% from 10,000 to 587 during that time frame. Summonses for low-level offenses like public drinking and urination also plunged 94% from 4,800 to 300. Even parking violations are way down, dropping by 92% from 14,700 to 1,200. Drug arrests by cops assigned to NYPD's Organized Crime Control Bureau, which are part of the overall number, dropped by 84% from 382 to 63. So look at this. They stopped writing all these tickets. They stopped going after everyone for petty bullshit. And oh, crime went down and there's been no murders. What a surprise. Maybe it's because the cops are murdering a lot of the people. A report put out by the Citizens Budget Commission last month showed a drastic decline and the amount of traffic tickets written. A CBC report made evident that the main purpose of police is revenue generation. They are here to steal from us. They are here to rob us. That's why they have asset forfeiture seizures because they want to take everything you have. They want to enslave you. They want to make you into a third world population. And yes, I know every cop's not bad. Every cop's not trying to do this, but they're all working for the same system that wants to enslave you. The report showed that last month a stoppage proved to cost the city $10 million a week in lost revenue from petty traffic citations alone. This is not how you build a society with a good economy by stealing $10 million a week from your own citizens. Despite the lack of revenue collection, the city failed to collapse into chaos. Oh my! There was no chaos because the cops stopped doing their stupid little petty job. The stoppage has helped to show the people of the United States that most of the policing done in the U.S. is little more than revenue generation. Drug offenses, parking violations, and traffic citations are not so much crimes as they are streams of revenue for the city. They are also the reason for the majority of police harassment within particular communities, harassment that is being proven entirely unnecessary. Now this next part is extremely critical. I have been saying this for a long time. You have the police. They have cars. They literally drive around all day looking for trouble. And the majority of the time the police are called, it's over some petty crap like a car was stolen, my window got broken, there's children playing outside unattended without an adult. Those are usually the reasons why police are called. Now, when a firefighter gets called, usually because it's a life 
life-threatening situation. But the firefighters stay in their own house, wait for their call. They don't drive around all day looking for fires, and that's exactly what it says right here. Imagine a police force that acted more like firefighters or EMTs. Firefighters don't have to go door-to-door -door looking for fires in order to be effective. EMTs, just like firefighters, wait for a call before reacting, and their services are oft proven invaluable, contrary to that of police work. Police Commissioner Bill Bratton, ostensibly unaware of the work stoppage, anticipated that it would end last month. However, we have yet to see the numbers confirming this claim. It would be irresponsible to assume a 100% correlation between the work stoppage of the NYPD and the murder rate. Often, factors such as cold and snow can play a large role in reducing the levels of crime in an area. Well, you know what then? Let's stop global warming. Let's, uh, let's make the world cold so we can end crime because it will be for our safety. However, this record coupled with a reduction in the amount of people being shaken down by the NYPD is certainly noteworthy. Noteworthy, but apparently not mainstream media worthy. Mayor Bill de Blasio certainly didn't miss his chance to try to cozy back up to the thin blue line in his statement on Thursday. The extraordinary streak of safety over the past several days is a testament to the hard work of men and women of the NYPD, blah, 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 safest city in America, blah, 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 blah. No, it's not the safest city in America because you guys have this huge heightened terror alert constantly where you scare the crap out of everybody. That, by definition, is not keeping the city safe. That is making up threats so that you could have a slave society where the cops patrol the area and so they could steal money from everybody. Prior to this 11-day streak, there was already a drop in murders through February 8 as compared to the same period last year. The last reported homicide happened on the night of Super Bowl Sunday. Whatever the cause or causes, humans not murdering other humans is truly an inspiring thing. Hopefully this streak continues. And you see, there it is right there. We do not need cops driving around the street, harassing us, enforcing laws, and making sure we're being safe. This proves it right here that we could live on our own without daddy driving around and controlling us. That's all for now. Grino61 signing out. And we begin with breaking news. Just moments ago, a barricade situation ended in Hawthorne five hours after it first started. News Chapter 4 was over the scene here this morning. Police went to a home on Doty Avenue at about 5.30 this morning to serve a warrant, but the suspect refused to open the door. NBC4 said Chen is live on the scene with how this all came to an end. Ted. Michael, thankfully, the situation has been resolved peacefully. In fact, just a few minutes ago, we spotted five people being detained on the sidewalk by the Hawthorne Police Department. Let's show you those pictures, these five people sitting on the sidewalk being detained by Hawthorne Police. We still don't know who exactly is the suspect yet. They were detained about an hour and a half ago. This entire investigation began right around 530 this morning. That was the call. SWAT officers serving a search warrant on this home in the 14,005 block of Doty here in Hawthorne. We are told that one of the people in the home saw these SWAT officers and then shut the door, resulting in the barricade situation. And we have been here for the last few hours. Uh, our photographer, Scott Spiro, at one point heard flashbangs coming from the home, but then the officers were able to get inside and take into custody. Uh, four men and one woman. We are told this is linked to an attempted murder investigation, an attempted murder that took place at the end of January here in Hawthorne. Shots fired, but no one hurt in that incident. And now they are trying to find the person who fired those shots at the end of January. And once again, though, the... Uh, the situation has been resolved peacefully, and even though uh, neighbors were evacuated for safety reasons, we understand hopefully they'll be able to return to their home soon. Five people being uh, detained right now, four men and one woman. Reporting live from Hawthorne, Ted Chen, NBC4 News, Michael Carroll, back to you. All right,